Our intention is to really make every individual that's fighting for you feel and act like a real human being. We realized kind of a, a few years ago that there's something, there is something special in Intel hardware in that the GPU shares the same memory as the CPU. Arminius, a traitor. I think not. So they'll flinch when arrows hit them. You'll see officers barking orders. This is something that, that, that it's absolutely vital for creating that sense of immersion and making the battles feel really convincing and making you feel like you're there. What we've managed to do is put in some, some little trickery whereby you can copy directly from system memory into graphics memory. Now, we are, I think, just in our infancy in terms of what you can do with this technology. There is more to come. You see these men fighting their guts out in incredible detail. Uh, and then you can zoom out and see this battle played out across thousands and thousands of men on a truly epic scale. What new graphics techniques are waiting? I can't wait. I can't wait to see what they are. Germania will be free! Intel and Creative Assembly have worked together closely in the past and uh, it's a partnership that's, that's always served us well. We started with Empire and doing multi-threading there and we've now got to the stage with uh, DirectX 11 and some of the extensions we're using where we're really leveraging the hardware. So I think the relationship between Sega and Intel and Creative Assembly is really paying off more and more. Lots of the previous Total War games have won awards. But I think really what we try and focus on is making sure that we're building a game that the community of players that we tend to have really enjoys and also to make sure that new players can come in and enjoy the games. We've chosen to work with Creative Assembly on Rome 2 because, uh, first of all, we have a good previous history. We worked on uh, Empire, Napoleon, Shogun, and we have a great rapport with, with the team. And we work together to create this kind of wonderful thing. It's really amazing how it comes out every time. The time has come to end this war. That much is true. But end it with blood and fury and glory for Rome. At Creative Assembly, we've just celebrated our 25th anniversary, and we're really glad to mark that with the announcement of Total War Rome 2, which is the follow-up to the original Rome Total War. Rome 2 is a huge project for us. We are really trying to push the bar and really take the series to the next level. Rome is, for us, really the ultimate empire-building era. It's the ultimate period in which to set a Total War game, which combines this empire-building grand strategy with you know, massive, epic, real-time battles. We can deliver arguably the most spectacular sights ever seen in a computer game. No prisoners, no mercy. Kill them all! Yes, Consul! Forward! Intel's here working with Creative Assembly on two aspects of the game. One is making sure that the CPU is really well used, so we have multi-threading, all that kind of uh, stuff in there. But our real focus on this one has been graphics. Intel have provided us with two new extensions to DirectX 11.1. Um, these are termed uh, UAV serialization and direct resource access, both of which give us an opportunity to create faster, more optimal techniques than we can do otherwise. Intel's fourth generation core processors not only beef up the graphics horsepower, but they add two extensions beyond DX 11.1. And what that means is higher frame rates, less stutter, better transparency, better shadows, better lighting generally, and that's all on the integrated processor graphics which Intel has, has introduced here in 2013. We are in a fortunate position to be able to play with these new DirectX 11.1 extensions, and they really are valuable extensions that we'd like to see formally included in a future version of DirectX. We think of UAV serialization as a critical section object that could be applied at a per pixel level or globally to the shader. And we think about direct resource access as the ability for the runtime to enable you to lock GPU resonant textures on systems that support unified memory. UAV serialization is a mechanism for controlling the order of writes to UAV surfaces from the various different execution units on the GPU. One of the problems is as you have multiple processors processing pixels, you can't always guarantee the right order. 
Now this lets you actually serialize that and suddenly it opens up a whole load of quite complicated video processing that you can do. It can also be used to do some pretty cool new things, which include a, a new technique for order independent transparency. What have we done? <laughs> Transparency has often been a problem in games, you know, right back to when 3D first started. Hardware has struggled really to cope with transparencies. When you try to draw transparent stuff, things which are like smoke or hair or dust particles or water, it's fundamentally difficult to get the rendering right. The classic approach has always been hampered by low frame rates and uh, quality issues. With the introduction of Intel's latest fourth generation hardware, we're finally able to um, deliver real-time order-independent transparency. The full name, actually, of the, of the extension is AOIT, which is Adaptive Order-Independent Transparency. If you've got 500 polygons that are all being overlaid on a particular pixel, you don't want to draw all 500 polygons because you're not going to see the alpha effect from the ones at the back. So the adaptive part is a technique for kind of culling the polygons that aren't going to have any kind of visual contribution to the scene. This will never end. They will never surrender. Take those walls! The end user benefit for AOIT is it takes us to kind of a deeper immersion. The second advantage of the gamer, obviously, is speed. We've all experienced games that kind of suddenly chunk when you've got five explosions going off in front of you. This is the alpha process and this is what AOIT at least takes steps towards getting rid of. We're setting an agenda here which is all about solving problems for games developers and therefore improving the experience for games players. It's really important for us that we can scale to all available hardware out there. And certainly there's more and more fans telling us that they like uh, you know, enjoying our games out and about on mobile devices. What Ultrabooks give us is the opportunity to put the Total War experience in far more places than we have previously. People are able to, to play that on the plane or on the couch in front of their TV, um, wherever they might be. Being able to whip out the laptop, the Ultrabook, and play some Total War is, uh, is great for us because it means that our fans are getting out there and playing the games. We want them to be playing in more places. Visually stunning graphics, uh, immersive gameplay, with the advantage that you can take it on the move, on the train, on the plane, you can play Rome 2 anywhere. Arminius will betray Rome. You must turn back. He will betray We need to make sure that um, the game looks fantastic on high-end machines, but is also playable on a wide range of machines. We've worked very closely with Creative Assembly to make sure that Rome 2, out of the box, it's just a beautiful experience. Install it and run it. It's smooth and slick, everything's beautiful. There's nothing more off-putting than opening a box, pulling out the game, installing it, and it plays at two frames a second. When you install the game, it plays and it works. Yeah? And you don't have to go and know, faff around with various different setting screens and, and, and try to find the one that works. Working with Intel uh, on Rome 2 has been a joy. It's a very collaborative uh, endeavour where both parties are contributing their expertise to produce features that really enrich the player's experience. They're very interested in keeping us honest, in working closely with us on the API and on the technology. It's tremendously helpful to have someone who is critical and constructive, and Creative Assembly have been all of those every time. The best part of working with Creative Assembly is having the chance to bang heads with some really clever and really creative and really dedicated people. It's fun. It's almost fun. It's almost not work. So looking at what's coming up from Intel and some of the things that are there in the hardware, it's quite exciting. What we're starting to see is the hardware isn't getting in the way of the programmers so much, so guys in the team are really able to focus on stuff that we think really matters for the players. I love the fact that we deliver a world which is so visually rich that at times you really, really are convinced by it. And as the horsepower grows inside our GPUs and the interconnection gets more profound between the GPU and the CPU, the ability of the graphics engine to use that, that tightly coupled pair of engines grows. So we will see games which have much better quality lighting, much more interactive 
uh, kind of environments, much more substance to the world as well as much more detail to the world so that it, look, it looks realistic wherever you go. And I think over the next five years or so we will get to the stage where a significant number of games deliver what is genuinely real-time, indistinguishable from the world. And Rome 2 is a lovely step along the way.